the uh, screencast to kind of show exactly what I was trying to demonstrate with the uh, with the web API and trying to integrate that into your uh, uh, iOS uh, application. So once again, I have this uh, this controller here that I created. It's a has the simple person object, and it's just going to turn back this list here if you're not passing any parameters. And if you do pass in a parameter, what we'll do is it'll pass back the uh, the first one that matches the ID. So if I come here and I go to API samples here, if you see here that I have selected uh, API. Uh, people, this returns back a list of the people. And then if I put in specific ID, it's just going to return back um, one for that person. So now what I do is I want to incorporate this into the uh, into my iPhone application. So if you look right here, we have a standard application that's created from the template using the uh, uh, the table uh, master detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to comment out uh, here on the view to upload on the, the master view controller. Uh, I don't want to have those uh, button bar items here. So I'm going to go ahead and just comment that out. Oops. Okay. So I've commented that stuff out. Now what I want to do is I want to populate this object with the results coming back from the web API. So I'm going to add this code in here. And basically, what this is doing is this is this is the actual uh, URL. I'm creating a URL for that uh, URL back to my uh, sample that's running in uh, VMware. And now that I've set that URL. I'm going to use this convenience method method on uh, NS data to return back the contents of the the URL. Uh, once I get that data back, I'm going to do this JSON serialization where I convert the uh, JSON object into basically uh, an NS mutable array. Uh, you can cast that here, but it's just going to use ID here by default. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to run this and let's see what it returns back. Okay, so here's our simulator. And we can see that it's actually populated something here, but this is actually the actual JSON here. It's not very pretty. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to come back here, and we're going to go down to the method that basically is rendering out that, uh, that cell. So we have this method right here. It's called uh, table view cell for road index path. And by default, what it's going to do is it's going to try to set that cell to the value of the object. So I've already went ahead and set this to an NS mutable dictionary, which is why it, uh, it showed up there as the, uh, the JSON path. But instead of returning back uh, the description from the object, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, a little formatting here with the string. So let's go over here, and we're going to set the text to that label. That string. So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. And voila. So now we have uh, something that looks a little bit more like a readable list here. If we click here, we can see that it's still uh, passing back here uh, the JSON string in here, and we can modify that as well. So it's actually just passing in the ID uh, to the detail view, then we can then use to pull back more data. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can't make that change as well. So let's go over here. And something that's new in iOS 5 is it's prepare for segue. And right now what it's doing is it's actually taking an uh, object, and this was originally from the template, it's using a date. Yeah, I don't want to send it a date. I actually just want to send it uh, uh, an NS number value. So what I'm going to do, actually make it even simpler. Let's set this to... NS string and what we'll do is we'll take that ID and over here and for the object actually 
Let's change this to a dictionary. So when it comes to setting the object here, instead of actually passing back the whole object, I just want to pass it back a key in that object. So what I'll do is I want to say object object for key, and I'm going to set that key to the ID. And I want to pass it in as a string, so I'm just going to set that to description. It's a little cheat. And that should set that value. There we go. Let's run that again and see what happens. And there we can see we're actually passing back the ID. And that's it.